You're welcome. Start by taking a deep breath in. Hold that just for a moment and then release it. We'll do that once more. Take a deep breath in. Make an effort to make your exhale just a little bit longer than the inhale this time. And once more in. And when you get to the exhale, try to extend it just a little bit further as you rest, release, and ground yourself. It's a new year, and there's a familiar feeling in the air. New possibilities, perhaps ambition, resolutions, optimization, new goals. And these are all beautiful, good things. But I've noticed living in this body living in this culture, that the way that we hold these goals, these desires, these ambitions, it's vital to how we feel and move forward with those ambitions, desires, and dreams. Because the truth is that anything can become a trap for us. We can find an opening, some healing, some awakening in a given way, a thing. And then the human mind has this tendency to name that thing as the it, as the thing. And then we always seem to put some distance, some space between us and our ideals. We have a concept of perfection or the way things ought to be. And what started as a good thing, an opening, a healing, a new way to see our lives, it can become a trap. And we put that way, that person, that system of thought, that way of thinking, We put it in between us and the wholeness that we seek, the love that we want, the feeling of arriving. And it's like we're putting this thing between us and the divine, between us and love, between us and our happiness. There are many ways to say this, In many ways, this plays out. It can be a particular religion that gives you access to the divine. It can be a particular diet that will unlock your body's health and vitality. Or it can be mastering a particular skill to achieve your goals of wealth, success, maybe power. There's always something that we think we have to do, a place we have to pass through, a version of of truth that we must acquire, that we put in between ourselves and our happiness. And we live in a unique time where knowledge is endless. Opinions are never ending. Just there in the pocket of your jacket is a little device that allows you to access all of human knowledge in an instant. To find a tutorial or a how to on nearly any topic. And so, in any area of your life, if you want to know how to do something, feel like you need an external voice to 
validate you, to get you where you want to be, to give you what you want. We have this marvelous piece of technology that can keep us on the hamster wheel of searching forever. So we take this feeling of inadequacy, of happiness or achieving our desire, our goal, as this thing that is way out there somewhere. And this feeling that we need something to put in between us in order to get there. And now we have endless possibilities in information. And it seems to me that no one has fully caught up to this moment yet. That on some level we can all feel overwhelmed, confused, and inadequate. And then this can take these beautiful and pure hopes, dreams, and desires for this new year. And it can just jam everything up. And you find multiple feelings and voices begin to arise in you that you both want to achieve all of your goals and your dreams and make this the best year possible while also feeling defeated and just saying, forget it all. And so we need to find a different place to start from because often hiding behind all of our goals and aspirations and dreams, there's this feeling and situation of not being good enough, of feeling that we don't belong. And so we need a new place to start, to clean this up, to clear out this confusion. Because the truth is that you do belong here. And this year, on this planet, in whatever country and state and city you find yourself, you belong. I want you to take that message deep into your being right now as you inhale once more. Inhale belonging and release anything that doesn't support that. And I believe your belonging is at the very ground of your existence. You don't belong for some outside grand purpose. I don't believe you have to achieve your potential. You don't have to make a grand contribution. You don't even need to make the world better. We can get to all of those things later. They're good things. But none of that is a prerequisite for your existence on the planet Earth right now. Why are you here? What are you here for? What are you supposed to do? These are uninteresting questions right now that we need to put aside. We can approach this in a very simple way. In the same way that an orange tree oranges, the earth peoples. To be an orange tree is to fruit oranges. And to be the earth is to bring forth people. And none of us justify the orange's existence, demanding that it has a purpose, waiting to see what its potential is. We just accept it as it is, with no fuss. But humans, we can get so wrapped up in this confusing jumble of asking all of these unneeded questions to prove that we are enough, to prove 
that we are worthy of happiness, of love, of acceptance. If you are listening to this, your very existence proves that you belong here. We all have these systems and programs and ways of thinking that ask us to question and judge our very existence. Questions about whether or not we're good. Questions about if we're loved, if we're okay. So many of us are walking around questioning ourselves constantly. Am I doing this right? Will this group accept me? Can I actually cut it? Am I worthy? Did I do something to lose this relationship or that love? We've become so used to this skeptical voice around our right to love, our goodness, to do what we want with our life. It becomes normal. We even nurture the voice and normalize it to where we don't even question it. And then we might find ourselves in a position where we're so self-conscious, second-guess our every move that we, we can't dance or sing, raise our hands or share our thoughts. We can't try something new without this voice criticizing us. And we accept it. We don't argue with it. And here we would actually do ourselves well if we actually fostered some skepticism around that voice that says that we can't do it, that we don't belong, that we aren't loved, that we're not good enough. Instead of believing that voice and allowing it to stop us from doing and operating in the world in the way that we want to, we need to learn to question that voice and quiet down, let that voice pass. Because when you quiet down your internal world, when you sit with yourself and observe your thought patterns, you allow feelings to arise and express themselves. And that has this way of clearing up things internally. And as you notice and clean up some of these voices, happiness, ease, contentment become things that don't happen on the other side of an experience or an accomplishment, a book you read. No, those things actually are found to be existing in you deeply the entire time. Sitting at the very base of who we are as people is belonging, is happiness, is contentment. And if if we start here and we let that sink deeply into our hearts, into our bodies, well then all this talk of ambitions and goals, resolutions, well now they emerge inside us from a different space because they're not informed from lack or a fear. They're coming from a curiosity, an interest. And it becomes about play and possibilities. It's not weighed down by all the other junk that was previously there. And as you begin to practice this and continue with it, you may even begin to hear those voices, see those insecurities, from a place of compassion. Because oftentimes that critical voice has come to you in a specific moment, times in your life, in your past, where they were trying to protect you, keep you safe. So you begin to see those voices that are there, but you're clear enough to say thank you. Thank you for trying to help but I don't need you any longer. I want to play. I want to try something new. And of course it might not work. It might fail. But I still want to give it a shot. Because why not? It's a new year. And I know that I 
belong here. Go in peace and belonging.